tuning. Please do it. One of the things that surprises me quite often is how um, reluctant people can be to sort out their tuning. Um, a certain reluctance to just move pegs. I think possibly because quite often pegs are stiff or they're very slippy and so people are worried about making it worse and or worried about taking a long time over it and other people getting getting impatient and holding other people up. Um, I would much rather that people took two minutes, even three minutes to tune and then played for the next 45 minutes sounding nice um, then didn't tune at all because they don't, they don't want to get started and they're worried about it and play for the whole day slightly out of tune. So here are some tips for um, tuning easily and successfully. So I've untuned my vial quite a bit. I've even moved the odd fret because we're going to talk about that as well. Um, but tips, tips for tuning. So I would prefer to tune to a sound than to a needle. I think it's a preferable, um, a preferable option. Needles have quite a lot of leeway in them, whereas sound is a fixed thing and you can come or, or go um, into it and you can hear really clearly when, when you're matching. If that's something that um, worries you, if you think that you don't trust your ears enough to be able to match the sound, what about practicing um, with a tuner that does both and learning to tune to a pitch and then checking with the needle whether or not you've you've made it and you'll really soon find out whether you have a tendency of hearing things slightly sharp or hearing things slightly flat and the more you do it the, the more accurate you can train your ear and um, to hear more accurately so I would I would really recommend trying to tune to a, a constant solid pitch um, and if you're if you're worried about the, the reliability of your own ears, then check it against um, a, a needle meter as well. So I'm going to start at the top. Um, here's D. We'll have it in that octave, I think. One of the things that people often um, are not sure about is that they can tell that they're not quite right, but they're not sure whether they're sharp or flat. So if you're close. But I'm not sure. I'm sure now. So I've moved it so that I know I'm out and I know I'm flat. And now I've come back up to pitch. The most common things, the most unhelpful things that I find people doing when they're tuning are lots of this rather than a really nice smooth. It's hard for you to hear if your bow is changing all the time. If you're tuning to a needle meter, it's impossible for the needle to pick up a steady reading if the note is always um, vibrating. So a really steady smooth bow is important. It would be worth, if the pegs that are on this side, there's a definite advantage to tuning this way around because as you, as you get close to the pitch that you want to be at, should be freely turning to start with, as you get close, you need to be pushing the peg into the side of the peg box so that it doesn't slip. But if you push the peg, the vial's gonna do that. Fortunately, your head isn't in the way. So, you can use it. important is the volume of the tuning box. If it's so loud that you can't really hear yourself play, that's not very helpful. But equally, if you turn the volume right down, and you tune like this, when you come to play, actually the pitch varies quite a lot depending on how much weight you put behind things. So it's really unhelpful to tune ever so quietly and then play in real life. So we'll turn the volume up just a little bit more. So 
so far so good then for the pegs on this side using just the side of your head to support the instrument as you're pushing the peg into the peg box. What happens on this side then? You're merrily turning your peg away, you get to the right place and again you push and there's nothing to push against. So you need to make sure that you've got the peg in two fingers, three fingers, whatever means you can get a decent grip on the peg. But you have to have something on this side of the peg box as well. So I've got my little finger round the side of the neck here and a couple of fingers and a thumb on the peg so once it comes to pushing the peg in I'm holding it in place with this little finger something to push against. Makes it very reliable. I can stop whenever I, whenever I want, that peg is not going to slip. Okay, so you've got your strings in tune. Um, what about these things? Frets are really useful on the one hand for the visual element that they give to the fingerboard. It's really helpful to be able to see where you're, where you're going, isn't it? They're really unhelpful when it comes to tuning because you're kind of stuck with the pitch that they're set at. There's not a lot you can do to um, change the pitch if your frets are in the wrong place. And again, it amazes me how many people won't move their frets if they know that their, um, that their note is not in tune. So we'll tune a chord, and somebody will, will tune their string really carefully, and then we'll test the chord out again, and it will sound absolutely terrible. And they'll say, oh, that's because I was playing it with a full finger rather than an open string. Shall I play the open string instead? It's more, more in tune. And I think, this is a D. This is also a D. Ought to sound like a D. If one of your Ds sounds different to the other, something is not right. If your strings are in tune, then you have to move your frets so that they agree. So the thing that you need to pick first, I guess, is to decide what temperament you're going to play in. So I'm tuning my seven string bass, and I'm going to tune it to the lotty because that is a kind of safe, um, serves lots of purposes not too extreme type temperament. So I've moved a fret just to be able to show you this. Here's the E. accusingly at your vial, even giving it the Paddington stare, it's not going to help. You have to do something about it. So you know that the string's right. It's got to be the fret that's not there. And it's flat, isn't it? So pick up your fret and move it, and it's fine. The thing is, I'm trying to tune the G on the E string, 
there's not much point in me moving this bit of the fret because I can move this bit miles and the G hasn't gone anywhere because I didn't move that part of the fret. So that might have been perfectly in tune down here and I've just made a really sharp note on the bottom string without changing at all the bit of the note that I was actually wanting to move. So make sure that you're moving the part of the fret that relates to the note that you're trying to tune. Much better. So I'm going to check that that same fret is in the right place on the A string. This is a little bit loud. Here's the C. Be sharp, so we'll just go and check that out as well. Fingers on the top of the peg box. The string is good. The F is disgusting. So we're going to take this bit. It's amazing how many people will play with other people and have their vials tuned in completely different temperaments and say, well, it can't make that much difference, can it? Um, it makes a huge amount of difference depending on which note you're playing. So do agree on your temperament with your consort or with your keyboard player if you're, um, if you're playing later baroque stuff, if you're playing continuum. Don't play an equal temperament if the keyboard's tuned to, to velocity because it will sound revolting. Um, and just don't be afraid of moving your frets. If your pegs don't work either, if they don't turn um, easily or they slip really easily, get somebody to sort them out. Because if your pegs don't, don't work, they're no use to you at all. Vials go out of tune, they go out of tune all the time. So if you have pegs that, that don't work and pegs that you're worried about moving, that's no help to you at all. So if you think about the number of string instruments in the world, talking violin family, viola, cello, gamba, hundreds of pegs get made and fitted properly to work and to turn every year. If your pegs don't work, find yourself a decent luthier, take your instrument and, and ask them to sort the pegs. They need to turn freely, they need to not be going in, in great big jumps because then you, you can't tune accurately. Um, they need to not slip as well. So if that's a real problem, it should be possible to get them sorted. It might be possible to just, if they're stiff, to do um, to put some peg paste or things on. We might talk about that in a, in a later video as well. Um, but as long as your pegs work, then tuning, just practice. Bowing really long smooth notes and getting this hand to move the pegs around. your neighbours off the wall. So that's the bass. Maybe it's easier to tune a bass than it is to tune a treble. Shall we see? Got my 
my treble resting actually on me, it's not waving about in thin air. So that again, it makes this side relatively easy to, to tune. I think I've probably got a finger here. Just things, anything that supports it while you're trying to push the peg into the peg box. Let's have a top D. of this it's a trouble I never play down there it's important and it's important because you've probably noticed this little two pence piece that is blue tacked very tastefully to the belly of my treble and it's there as a wolf eliminator I might one day acquire something that's slightly more um, aesthetically pleasing but for now that does the job and I tried it's eliminating a wolf that's on the open E string which is a bit of a nightmare every time you come to the open E string and the bow kind of pings off and the note doesn't speak properly. And I solved it to start with by tuning the bottom string up a tone to an E. So it was an octave below this string and it solved it perfectly. But it caused all sorts of other, particularly the top string, the added tension at the bottom made the top string behave completely differently. So the idea that it doesn't matter what this string is tuned to is, is a complete myth. It has such um, an effect, not just about creating resonance, but actually just allowing the way the way the instrument is set up, the tension of these things is crucial. So if your top if your bottom string is miles out, it causes all sorts of problems up here. So really do tune the bottom string on your treble. <laughs> with the frets. If they're not in tune, just move them. It's fine. If they're really stiff, give them a good old yank. If they're really loose and they move, that is no help to you either. Little bits of paper in the back to stop your frets from um, wandering around while you play are also really helpful. Check things like the most common ones that are not quite in tune are the first fret, so B flat and F are often wayward for people. And um, The fourth fret, C sharp, G sharp, Often also, um, when you end up with a third of the chord, they are suspiciously not in tune. And then the fourth finger, to give you the same note as your open string, that is often not quite in the right place. So do check them, and if they're not right, do move them um, and pick a temperament. More on that later, I think. But for now, please play in tune. <laughs> 